Hey, we back. I'm here on Discord, kind of, today, where we're talking about Discord bots, as we often do, but specifically, this is with reference to a video I made before about how to get a user's username on Discord with just their ID. And one of the methods that I cited was to make a bot that does it for you. So this is how I would do it like that. Look at that. It's great. It works fantastic. And this is the bot that I made that does that. It does other things as well. And this is why I don't give people access to my bot because it does a bunch of stuff that's kind of private with relating to my gists and random other tokeny things and like you guys can't have my bot. If you want more information about how to uh, get someone's username with their ID, I have made a whole video on it. That's the point. I'll link it in the description and you can go check it out. There are a bunch of other methods that also work and don't require you to make a bot. However, this, once you've made the bot, is a very easy method. As you can see, you just type in the command and that's great. That's why I did it personally. And you guys might want to do that as well. Of course, you can make bots for other purposes as well. There's loads of reasons why you might want to make a bot. I've made a bunch of them. But specifically with reference to this, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make an, a very simple bot today, how to set it up with um, some nice free hosting, which is wonderful. Um, and you can use it with your friends and, and do whatever you fancy, such as get people's usernames with their ID. So where do we start? Well, we're going to start over here on the Discord developer portal. You can find this very easily by Googling it discord.com slash developers slash applications here and it will list all of the bots that you've made before if you've not made any there won't be any here you can add a new application i'm not going to be doing all that from scratch today but don't worry about it too much it's all quite self-explanatory once you've made your bot though of course the most important thing is giving it a name and a cool profile picture but then there's a couple of other things here that we want firstly we're going to want to invite it to the server this is this is here we pick some perms for it and we generate oh, OAuth2 scopes. As it says, generate an invite link for your application by picking these scopes and permissions it needs to function. I can't remember what all of these do, to be honest. They have kind of wacky names, but just pick stuff that looks like it makes sense. Messages.read, that looks important. Bot, sure, let's go for it. If it is a private bot that you are using yourself on your server and you're not expecting it to be a big thing, then you can pick pretty much any of these. You could pick all of them if you wanted, and it won't do you any harm, I don't think. And this will give you an invite link. You can then add your bot to the server. The next thing that you're going to want is to go into the bot menu here and get yourself a token. As it says, for security purposes, tokens can only be viewed once when created. So when you have your new bot here, you will generate it a token. It will tell you it once and you'll have to copy paste that somewhere for memory, at least for now. Eventually, we'll get it put into your code for the bot. Um, but for now, just store it away somewhere so you don't forget it. After you've got that, that's all good. Next, we do need some code for the bot, unfortunately. Bot is coding. We are going to be using Python for the bot code, and I'm going to be showing you how to do it in Replit. Replit is just a place for you to store your code. It's great. It's fine. There are other places to store code, but we're going to be talking about Replit. I have here the code for my gist editor bot. A lot of it is not going to be helpful for you. We can just look at the help message it's got here. Commands to turn off main reactor. Like what? This is some Minecraft stuff going on. And this is not going to be necessary for you. Don't worry about it. What's important is the stuff at the top and the stuff at the bottom that's going to be necessary for any bot that you want to make. Get on Replit, make yourself a REPL, which is what this little thing's called, your files and your stuff around here. We've got Gist Editor 2. There we go. That's the name of this REPL. Make yourself a REPL and make it Python, and then you'll you'll be thrust with some, some little space to put code. We've got main.py up here. If you've not coded in Python, before. Don't worry about it. It's not too hard. Most of the code here you can copy paste. It's, if this video gets super outdated, some of the code might not work. I have had to update it once or twice, but for any time in the near future, this should work fine. I think I've had to update it once in the last three odd years, so don't worry about it too much. It'll be fine. 
Firstly, what we're going to want to do is get ourselves our modules. These are our imports. You're not going to need all of these, but you will need OS and Discord. Discord, obviously, OS is a Python thing, Pog. To get these on Replit, we're going to have to go down here to the Packages menu and download them. You can search for Python 3 packages. You're looking for this discord.py and you're also uh, not looking for OS because it comes by default. Epic! We don't need OS. Cool. Um, <laughs> there is some other stuff that I've got here, but like I say, don't worry about it. What you need is you need your discord.py. Download that. It's going to take a little bit, but don't worry about it. It'll be all good. We'll come back to it later. Next, you need to set up your intents. This, again, is like your perms for your bot. This is the magic bit of code that you copy paste just because because that's how it works. Let's go. It's like your message intents, for example, says that it can read messages. And then down at the bottom, we have actually starting up the bot. Client.run token. Now you can just copy and paste your bot token as you got it off here, straight into here. Personally, I've set it as an environment variable, which is like a secret, so you guys can't hack into my bot. And I would recommend doing the same for yours, because unless you have like premium on Replit, your uh, repls are going to be public. So in order to do that, we go to secrets here. And we've got all of our things. Again, don't worry about some of this. It's not relevant. But what you will want to make is your bot token one. You can add a new secret here. You call it bot token. You copy paste your bot token in here. And I don't press this button because then you hack into my bot. Um, and then you put this os.getenv here with the name that you put in here. And that'll get your bot token off of here. It's all wonderful. And then we have client.run. This just starts up the bot. You can see I've got a bit of a funky try and catch on here. Again, this is something that you can just copy paste if you like. This just makes it a little more reliable to start up the bot because sometimes it really doesn't like starting up and it'll crash. So it's going to try to start itself up. And then if it fails, it's going to kill itself and then and then try again. It's magic. It works, it's all good, and this is another reason why we need that OS import, because it, it'll it kill itself sometimes. So great, that's, that's all you need to get your bot started up. But currently, your bot doesn't do anything. So we need to make the bot do something. We're gonna go back up to the top now, and we've got these client on events. Uh, so this first one is optional, this is on ready, this is when the bot starts up. It's going to say bot online, this is just in here, if we, look around there we go gist editor bot online uh, this little code here is just for the user of the bot so you can see it's gist editor uh, and the tag is 1023 because apparently it's still got a tag good job bot still having a tag um, and you do this with the format client there you go so you can copy paste that if you like it doesn't really do anything it's just putting this in here um, and then it changes the presence on Discord, Discord presence is a thing. If we have a look on your Discord presence, on your bot, it says playing a game. That's what the presence means, basically. And I think it's smart to put a little help thing in there. You'll notice all my bots have something like this. This has got help, help in one servers. Wow, cool. This one is offline, so it doesn't have uh, anything there, but in theory it would. Uh, but the point is, I think it's nice to put a little help message there. So if you, if you want to do that, we can put this here and you see I've just put the name of the, the Discord game that it thinks it's playing is help. We have the next client event after this. This is on message. This is on the bot being ready. This is on a message being sent in a channel that the bot has access to. So this is important because it's your commands. Uh, we have the message here. This is an object. Don't worry about that if you're not sure what that means, but it's an object. Uh, so we have uh, message to author. This is who wrote the message. And client.user, client from earlier, we have in our magic bit of code from the start, this is the bot, right? The bot itself. So this is checking if the person that wrote this new message is the bot, ignore it, basically. Don't do anything. You should probably put that in. Next, we extract the actual message itself. I've called this message. The message.content. This is the text that was within the message. Um, and then you can see we do message.starts with. You don't have to do that if you don't want. You can do it any way you like. It's just a bit of text. But I've gone for message.starts with because what this means is they can write help and then any bunch of random text, such as this, 
If I type help, and then any bunch of random text, it's still going to show the help command because it's it starts with help. So I like it being like that. You can do it anywhere you like. And then this is the bit of code for sending a message. Await message.channel.send. This means it'll send it in the same channel as where the message came from. You don't explicitly have to do that if you don't want, but it's kind of smart. So send the command response back in the same channel. And then we just put a bit of text here. You write whatever you like in these little quote marks here and then close up those brackets. So I've got my help message here. I would recommend having a help message on your bot just because it's very easy to do. And it means that if you forget what the prefix is or what the name of the command is, you can check very easily. So I've got here a nice little list. Uh, this backslash n means new line. And then uh, this is some regular Discord text formatting here, which is why we have it in a nice little box. Right, we've got the nice little box and we've got all the new lines. That's how that works. All good. Just a, a good old string there for the help message. Then we've got invite. If you want to invite your bot to another server, maybe you put, put an invite command. We've got this oos.getenv again. This is another secret. If we go back to the secrets page, we have invite and bot token. Bot token was used down here. I've got my invite link here. Again, I'm not going to press that button so you can't have my bot, but you can put this in if you like. Uh, for your invite link, we talked about that earlier. You get it from here. So once you've got your invite link, you can put that in your secrets as well, or you can just paste the, uh, the string straight into here, if you like, inside of these speech marks. Uh, well, it'd actually be instead of this. You, you'd type the, the URL in here like this, right? But I've got it with os.getenv because I've made it a, a secret. All good. And then after that, we have some other commands. So I've got my main reactor stuff, all the rest of it. You can ignore all that because that's unrelated. This is your bit of code for finding a particular user. So if the message starts with get user, this is how we find the ID. Message replace get user with blank, get user space. So you have get user space and then the ID of the person, right? So this is going to be ID. And we find the user by doing client dot fetch user ID. Client, remember, is the bot. So it's just going to fetch the user and then this is going to return the user as an object again. Then we send back to the channel with the await message channel send once again. And if they find the user, we send user.name plus the little hashtag and then the discriminator. Of course, this is going to become a bit useless later on because everyone's not going to have a discriminator anymore. But that's how we did it before. And user.name is still fairly appropriate. As we can see down here, it's sending me a hashtag zero, even though I have one of the new usernames, which is actually hidden there, but there you go. But this is my new username. And then it sends hashtag zero, which still works because if we take the ID of someone that has an old user uh, with a tag, you can see that it sends the tag there. So it's helpful to have that, but it's not necessary anymore because they're going to get rid of discriminators. There you go. And if it can't find the user, then it'll just say user not found. So again, you can copy paste the, this bit of code if you like, and just shove that in there, and that'll uh, that'll get you your user. And there's your bot. There's your code. All all good. Wonderful. There's one sneaky little thing though that I haven't talked about, and that's how to keep your bot alive. I mentioned that we could get ourselves some epic free hosting of Replit. This is kind of true because obviously my bot is running. I press the play button up here to make the bot run. It's going to put your little uh, bot online message here. If you copy pasted that bit of code, that one was here, right? So it's going to put this stuff in. But once you close down the page, it'll eventually uh, stop running. The bot will just stop running. You'll have to open it back up on Replit to press the play button again, because Replit doesn't like hosting your, your bot code for free, unfortunately. However, we haven't talked about this sneaky little line of code down here, keep alive which we imported at the top here from don't die, which is our second file. We have main.py and don't die.py, which we have open here. Now, disclaimer on this bit. This is not my original method for keeping the bot alive on Replit. I will have stolen off some YouTube tutorial probably two or three years ago to find this, but it works good and it's a magic bit of code. So I'm going to share it here. 
feel free to also use it. We're going to have a couple extra imports here. We get these. This is more packages that you'll have to install. Flask and thread. And then this is basically, it's magic code, basically, yeah. It, it makes it running on a thread and an IP address, and it sends the little message, hello, I am alive, up here. It's all good. And what it means is if you keep pinging the bot, at this URL here, it's going to stay alive even if Replit wants to shut it down. Because Replit will think that it keeps getting uh, more information, and it's going to keep the thread alive. It, it's good stuff. You've got t.star, star. that's the point. Yeah, it's magic. It's just magic. That's all there is to it. Anyway, in order to keep it being pinged, we need something to ping it. And this is where we move over to another site, the final site for today, Uptime Robot. Uptime Robot is going to keep pinging it. As you can see, I have little Uptime Robots for all my bots. We've got Madei Trades, Karuda Frame Tracker, and Gist Editor. We go on Gist Editor here. You can see the URL. Um, getting Uptime Robot, you're just going to have to make an account and then add a new monitor. We can have a look at the info here. It's got the URL that it's going to be pinging. You get this just off here when you run it. Easy. And then you can set how often it's going to need to ping. I've got it pinging every 15 minutes. You don't need it that often. You can have it less often than that. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's pinging it reasonably frequently, it's all good. And you just set that off going. Simple. And it should just stay alive. It's not going to stay alive indefinitely because it is a little temperamental. But as I said at the start of the video, this whole thing is on the assumption that you're probably just playing the bot with your friends. And sure, maybe you need to go on to your replit and press the play button once every month or something. But that's not so bad, really, is it? For the most part, your bot's going to be up and it's going to be doing stuff. It's going to be letting you use your commands. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? And in this particular example, you can find people's IDs. Epic. Um, but that's about it for this video. That's all I wanted to say. Show you guys the stuff. Show you guys how to make your bot, basically, with this particular example. Um, it's a nice bit of code, and it is basically copy-paste. If you are not sure about Python code, like I say, it's no problem. If you want to make some other commands that do other stuff, might need to learn a little bit of Python code. Write yourself something up. It's not hard. You know how to um, uh, recognize particular commands. You've got the if message starts with, and you can have this for anything. If it must start with uh, main reactor, or cube reactor, or doors, whatever command you want. And then you just do something once, uh, once you've recognized the command, and you can send your message back whatever you want the message to be. It's all good. You can have your bot do anything you fancy. I will, however, be leaving this video here. Bye!